Hello everybody, and before I start this guide here, I just do want to emphasize this is a tutorial, a guide for complete beginners. So this is going to be if you are brand new to Stable Diffusion and Google Notebooks, things like that. This is a great tutorial for you to start with. For those who have been on my channel for a while, this probably isn't going to have too much for you. I'm just going to go over kind of the real basics, the models, everything from setting up the Google account on to downloading the notebook etc but i am working on some intermediate and advanced tutorials as well that will be out soon so for the rest of you welcome to stable diffusion and ai and the forum diffusion so what google collab is if you're not familiar with it it's a way that you can run these notebooks using remote processors remote gpus so you don't actually use your own computer to process so this will let you do it on even like on a mobile phone or something you can run this so that's one upside to it and there is a free version of it and you can do more if you want to put some money into it i do just because i love the notebook so much to me it's not really even about you know the money it's about what is the best and for me i just like using the notebook because for one thing i don't type my computer and i work a lot i work at home a lot all day so this really lets me kind of continue to do my work uninterrupted so anyways this right here i've included this link you if you already have a google account you can use that in your notebook as well so this will be the first thing you need to do is create a google account okay and now that you have created your google account go ahead and use the link here for the deform stable diffusion 0.7 notebook now one other thing if you're new to notebooks in general the first thing you want to do anytime you have a link to a notebook you need to copy it to your drive Okay, so you just hit that. It's going to make a copy and open it because this one, the original version, you're not going to be able to keep any changes or anything on it. So you want to make that copy and that's always going to be the copy that you work out of. So we've got our copy here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one. And again, if you're new to notebooks, um, you always want to run them in order from top to bottom. If you try to run them out of order, you'll get errors. It won't work. It won't hurt anything, but you, it won't work. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to run this very top one. This will connect and start up the notebook. And I'm also just going to make sure I don't have other ones running. Oh, this is it. Okay, great. And let me show you another thing. So I am running this with the default settings right now. I haven't changed anything. So this is standard, standard. So this will be exactly how you will run it on a free Colab account. And since I am using GPU, um, you might get kicked off every once in a while, so you don't get unlimited use of it, but you get enough to do plenty of stuff. And so what I'm going to do, as you can see, this is the notebook. I'm just going to kind of scroll down here and show you there is a lot of stuff in here. So today, this is just, again, this is just a beginner's guide to kind of get you set up and how to use it. So I'm just going to show you a very few of these and we will start with the models. I'm just going to show you the basics to get up and running and recommend a couple of models here. So let's get, this is going to be our first change. So first of all, there is this model config. So you do want to pay attention to this. Um, there's just a few here. There's the V2 inference, the V2 inference V, and the V1 inference. So this will, you will change this depending on which of these models you use. So everything from here on down, from the V15 and down, will use the V1 inference. So if you're changing around models, Make sure you have that right inference for the right model group. And this one here, this 512 base you made, this is actually the model version of Stable Diffusion 2.0. Now, if you want to use this, I would actually recommend using this. This is the 2.1 version. They are both different. They both react to prompts differently than the 1.5 and earlier did. So, and a lot of people um, spend a lot of time, you know, learning all the prompts for the version 1.5 and earlier. So there's a lot more knowledge base for one of these models. So I would suggest you actually start with uh, this one, the V15 pruned EMA only, or the pruned, either one of these. Now you can get not safe for work images from these, just to warn you, especially if you throw in fantasy art, things like that, you might get topless women and things. With these up above, if you got kids in the house, you're really worried about that, go ahead and use one of these 2.1 2 or the 2.0 model. Again, I would say, start with this and i haven't really i've used the 760 a little bit you can really make really big images with this but especially on free i would recommend either starting with this or this and again this has a lot more knowledge behind it so that's what we're going to go ahead and start this tutorial with this and i'll go ahead you know if i do get some not safe for work images i will censor them and then since we are using that we are going to go down here to the v1 
and that's all I'm going to change. So I'm just going to kind of show you all the changes I do as I go down, and I'm just going to set you up to do the very basic uh, text to image and get up and running. And if you're one of my returning subscribers, there's probably not going to be too much in this video that you'll find useful. You already long know this stuff. So I am working on intermediate and advanced tutorials as well. Um, kind of at the same time I'm doing these, but I just wanted to start. I'm starting a whole new series now for the forum 0.7 and up because this notebook is great. It has everything in the kitchen sink in it. I don't anticipate it being obsolete for a while. You never know with AI, but you know what? This notebook is great to use, though. I'm going to make some great stuff with it, and this has everything we need to do some great images, some great videos, things like that. So... As you can see, this will take a while. So you can go ahead and run these. As long as you click them in order, it will just kind of queue up. And this is going to be the next thing you do. You're going to need to connect it to your Google Drive from that Google account you've already made. So you just hit this. Then you click on your account that it gives you options of. And then you hit Allow. And there you go. The rest of this is off and running now. And again, I've already selected. So these are just to recap again. These are the changes I did. I just Pick the V1 inference and the V15 pruned. All right, and then we're going to go down here. And you can also um, kind of minimize and maximize these settings like this. So for animation for this tutorial, we're just going to leave it on none. So, so this is where you select other animation modes for now. We're just making some still images. Okay, so for animation mode, we're just going to leave that on none. We're going to go ahead and start it. And we don't need to change any of these settings. It won't be using any of these settings since we have skipped that. Now here is our very first prompts. This is where we're going to start doing some changes. So right now we're just going to ignore the animation prompts and I'm just going to run the default here. So what this is going to do, if you notice too, there's some words in green here that kind of tell you what they do. So this is going to do two prompts. It's going to make a beautiful lake by Asher Brown Duran trending on art station and a beautiful portrait of a woman by art room trending on art station. So these are kind of the very, very classic kind of prompts that always had, you know, art station in it and kind of landscape images and portraits. So we're just going to run that. And let me show you also what we're going to get into here is going to be down here below it. And so for now, this is the resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. You don't want to use this size, actually, if you're doing any model except for that 768. You will get kind of weird looking images It actually will be a lot more coherent for stable diffusion if you keep it on five or if you put it to 512 by 512 so we're going to change that and i'm going to show you here a really quick guide to the samplers here you really only need to remember kind of two samplers here to kind of get a good variety so these samplers that say ancestral which includes this one this one and this one the a there i think is for ancestral these will give you very kind of more realistic images. So you see there's two versions of some of these. There's the DPM2, DPM2 Ancestral, Euler, Euler Ancestral, and then the DPM2M and the Ancestral here. So these will give you less realistic images, kind of more artistic, and this will give you a more realistic. So you can just kind of float back and forth between these. And if you want to play around with these, uh, the DDIM is good. The KLMS are good as well. They can kind of give you, but a lot of these will kind of give you very similar results. So I just recommend in the beginning, just kind of flip back and forth between the Euler and the Ancestral. That way you can just kind of get a good idea of kind of basically the two kind of different samplers there. But I would just kind of focus on these. When you make an image, this can give you really two really different results. And that way you kind of get an idea of what that does. So for now, we're just going to put it on Euler, and that's going to be faster also. The Ancestral do take a little longer to render. And the other change that I'm going to do, so so far we've just changed the resolution and the sampler, and then I'm just going to put the steps down to 40 here. And you also want to make sure you save the samples. That's where it will save in your Google Drive, and it will name it this. This will be the folder, basically, where you will find it. Now I'm also going to recommend one more change here. Under the file name format, right now it's going to save it like this with a time string index and prompt. I'd really recommend changing this to seed because if you have a really long prompt in there, you're going to get a huge file name and a lot of times it will take this PNG off the end of it and you'll have to rename it even just to load it up. So that can be kind of a pain. And we're going to go ahead and call this batch name first run. You don't need to do this. You can just keep it as is. And now the batch, I'm going to change this to 3. You don't have to. You can just leave it on 1. 
And what that does is this will just make three copies of the images. Now, prompt waiting, you can leave it on if you want. I'm just going to uncheck it for now. We're not using it. We'll get into that later. That's going to be a more intermediate or advanced tutorial. So you can just check that off and not get into waits yet. We will get into that a little bit later. I would recommend just first learning to prompt in general, where you just kind of want a subject and a modifier. And right now, I'm just going to run these default prompts. And as you can see, it is still loading. So when you first start off, it, it can take a little bit to get up and running. So just keep that in mind when you're using it. And let me see, I think I've already really shown you all the changes here to just get up and running and make an image. I'm just going to double check that here. Yeah, that's really all you need to do. And you can go ahead and leave this on, off, it doesn't matter. This won't matter until you actually start using them. I just turned it off when I'm not using it, just out of habit, and just so I know I'm not using it, so there's no reason to have it on. And yeah, that's really, oh, there is one more thing here, actually. Let me see if that is still this right here. Change this strength will actually affect the image. So we want this on zero unless we're using an, in an image. Even if it's not on, this can affect the image. So this is the other change I'd recommend, putting this down to zero. And that should be it. I think I've got everything there that I would consider necessary. Yeah, and that's it. So this is really, that's all the settings you need to do. You can even just jump right in and start, you know, changing the prompts right away too, because that's what this is about, is learning how to prompt, things like that. So I'm just going to run the default prompt here once this gets loaded, and then we'll come check back, and then I'll make up a couple of prompts here. Okay, our, everything is done loading. That took, I don't know, maybe five minutes, not a real long time. Now we're just going to go ahead and run this, and then we're going to run this, and we will have some images here very soon. And you can scroll down here and kind of watch the progress. We're going to have three batches with two images each because there's two prompts here. Which is kind of cool because you can queue up a whole bunch of prompts at once if you want. So there is, you can see it's running prompt one of two there, our beautiful lake. And there is our beautiful lake. And now it's running a beautiful lake again. So it kind of skipped that second prompt there. I wonder if that's because we put the batches in it. We'll find out. Nope, now it's doing them afterwards. Okay, so it's doing the first prompt three times. First, there, the lake. Then it should do the second prompt three times. There, yep. And so just like that, you are up and running, making some free images. And I, I really like these notebooks because they give you a lot more control a lot of times than the apps do, like with your resolution, things like that. And so now that you know how to do that, let's go ahead now and experiment a bit. Now you can start creating your own prompts. So let me show you something else you can do. You can go ahead, all this stuff in green, you don't really need it. And I'm just going to do this. I just prefer kind of working with one prompt at a time usually. So I'm just going to go ahead and just erase all that. And then we've just kind of got our blank slate here. Now don't erase this bracket. If you notice, there's this bracket there and there. And for the animation, there's the ampersand bracket. So you want to leave those. If you ever do make a mistake and you erase something and don't remember how this was, it doesn't work anymore, just go get a fresh copy of the notebook. So I'd also recommend, especially when you're beginning here, um, maybe make get two copies of the notebook initially. Keep one just as is, like as a master copy and then that you can make copies from and don't do anything with it. And then you'll always have a master copy of it there in your drive. So I'm just going to do this. A cyberpunk city, just something kind of random here. sci-fi movie my favorite artist H.R. Geiger and you can find all kinds of stuff about prompting there's even um, like a thing called prompt interrogator where you can put an image in there and there's all kinds of stuff out there all kinds of prompts you can use and this is really where the where the fun is just making up your own prompts so i'm just doing you know kind of some some kind of traditional prompts there some traditional um modifiers other modifiers are things like unreal engine that will give it more of a 3d look matte painting which is a background for like movie art things like that um, concept art and i also want to emphasize prompting in this the 1.5 version earlier are very not really different but they are different you'll well let me put it this way you get a lot different effects from the 2.0 
models if you use those. So if you find a good prompt in here and you're used to using it, and then you go up here and decide you're going to change your model and try that other one, just be prepared for very different results. They are they do act to some modifiers very differently, some not so much, but let's go ahead now and see how our prompt came out there. There is our cyberpunk city, kind of just buildings there, not really too interesting. So I said you want to leave this 512 by 512. It will make things more coherent, but you can every once in a while, especially with landscapes, you can go ahead and crank it up to 768. So it, it will kind of, um, it might kind of ruin your coherency a bit, but you can feel free to experiment that. Really 512 by 512 is the best though for the 1.5 model and earlier, you'll get a lot better results. And you can even do stuff like while it's running here, while it's doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a totally new prompt here. Okay, so we got a sci-fi outpost in a barren landscape, map painting concept art rendered in Unreal Engine. And let's go ahead and look at our other one there. So there is the 512 by 768. So you can see it doesn't look quite as good. You can do some other things to adjust that, but I just want to let you know you can use that, but it won't be quite as coherent. It won't, it won't crash or anything. Well, it can if you get it up too high, but let's go ahead and do this. And I'll go ahead and show you again the difference between the models. And that's really all the settings we're going to focus on here. No, uh, well, yeah. Maybe I'll show you Seed too, because, yeah, that can be... That I would just leave alone for now. Seed's are really good for... Actually, no, I'm going to show you that, because that's good to for your progression. To kind of learn what your prompts are doing, Seeds are very important. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in here as well. Okay, and this one is done. And there is our outpost in a barren landscape. We're getting a little more barren landscape there than outpost. That's all right. Let's go ahead and, okay, let's do this. We'll mix this up a little bit. And our render is done here. And there is our image with the prompts. So there is our sci-fi outpost in a barren landscape. Is that what I wrote? I forgot now. But anyways, so that's our that's our first prompt there. And I want to show you something here also that will be very useful to you, especially if you're learning how to prompt now, you're just starting out. So what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to go ahead and change the seed. Now, if you notice, the seed is set to minus one. Now, if we put this on a fixed number, I'm just going to go ahead and do this, 555, and I'm going to go ahead and just change the batch to one just to kind of show you what this does here. So what this will do when it's a fixed number, it will, um, I think it's in iterations now. Yeah, so it will, with iterations, it will make one after another. So it'll use one, then two, then three, then four, etc. But if, if you have an image like, let's say, okay, I really like this image. This was the one I'm going with. That's not that good, but let's just pretend. No, you know what? Let's get let's at least get one that's decent. And I'm gonna change this prompt up just a bit. Let's change this to a little more interesting. Let's just go ahead and take off the rendered Unreal Engine because I want to show you something else with the samplers. Okay, so we got a now we're getting too crazy there with a sci-fi. We'll just put a outpost. We'll put futuristic. Okay, so now we have the seed. We have the seed on fixed, and this will be very useful for you to kind of learn what your what your modifiers and everything is doing in your prompt, because you can actually see the changes. So first, I just want to show you what this does. What this will do is allow you to recreate an image exactly. So if you notice, there is our seed 555 right there. So each time we run this now with that seed it's going to do the exact same image. So this way you can do some changes and kind of see exactly what those changes do. So seeds are something really useful to use if you're trying to, like if you have a big um, watermark or something here, you can run that seed and then take out a little bit of your prompt and see what's causing it. Like, let me um, put in a couple here that might cause that. Um, I'll put stock photo, that's one. Um, by let's say Carol Bach and by Thomas Kincaid and every once in a while you'll get artist signatures you can do the same thing with that you can just get rid of the artist and that will usually fix that issue but if you're wanting your image to be in the style of an artist you might just want to fix that in Photoshop or something 
Okay, and there we go. So you can see this already gives us a much different looking image just by putting those artists in. And now we can go ahead and take one of them out. And this will change the image again. So this is a great way to kind of learn how to prompt. And you can learn which one of your prompt modifiers you'd like, which you don't, that kind of thing. Okay, and there we go. See, like right there, if you notice, there's like a watermark or something, probably from the Thomas Kincaid. So we can go ahead and, or maybe it's from that stock photo. That's always a something that can give you things like that. So let's go ahead and take out that stock photo and see if we get rid of that. Yeah, you can see right there. So we have taken that out, that part of our prompt out. Let's see if that got rid of it. And sometimes you just don't know. You just don't know what's really going on in your prompt until you do stuff like this and kind of dissect it. Okay, and there we go. Now it's gone. And I think the image as a whole, too, just looks a little more coherent. So that part of the prompt was really not that good. So anyways, this is what I really want to show you, just how to get in and use this for free and, you know, learn to experiment with it. And that seed will really help you do that. That can really help you see which part of your prompts are good which are bad and just help you learn. So this one, do not run this one usually. This one is called adaptive. This one has the potential to run forever and lock up your notebook if you get a bad kind of algorithm. So I'm not sure exactly how this works, but when you run this here, I'll risk it here. It's not good. You don't do a set number of steps. Your steps no longer matter. It's just going to run until it feels it has reached the end, I guess. I'm not really sure how it works, to be honest. But as you can see, it's not even really giving you too much of a different result. Looks like it ran 39 steps. So it ran pretty close to what we were doing anyway. And I'm not going to get into any of this other stuff. Like I would, I was saying, just start off with the steps, your weight and height, the resolution. Just kind of keep it 512 by 512. Experiment between a couple of the samplers, not all of them. And prompts. Just prompt, you know, practice your prompts and use your seed to kind of see what your different modifiers and everything are doing. And that one looks pretty similar to the other one, actually. Let me go and check that. Yeah, we just ran the... These actually look quite a bit different when with the two model. When you run those two, they look a bit different. I just want to confirm that. Here it didn't look like... No, it did. Yeah, so that this does look quite a bit different than the Ancestor. Okay. So anyways, that should about wrap it up. I hope I've given you enough here to get a good start. And I'm going to be making a lot of tutorials here, getting into more intermediate and advanced techniques. And I will see you all soon. Thank you for watching. And if this is your first, first guide into the AI art world, welcome very much. And I hope you have a lot of fun here. And we'll be seeing you all again soon. You all have a great rest of your night. Thank you for watching.